Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Dave DeAnne Show. I'm DJ Foster, joined by Grand Valley State head soccer coach Dave DeAnne. Coach, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, DJ. Good weekend for you guys. You're back from Minnesota after uh, winning a match and tying in a double overtime game against the top 25 team. Let's start with the victory. 5 nothing win at Minnesota Duluth on Friday. Scored two goals in the first half to take a 2 nothing lead to halftime. Scored three more in the second half to, uh, to distance yourself. Katie Bounds scored two of those goals in the second half. She was your multi-goal uh, scorer. Kayla Addison, Casey McMillan, Ashley Botts also found the back of the net. Chelsea Parise only had to block one shot, so uh, pretty dominant. Uh, effort from your guys, 22-5 to five, uh, in shots. Talk about the victory over Duluth. Yeah, good start to a long road trip. Um, you know, I thought this this road trip in general was good for our team to come together and face some adversity, uh, you know, in a difficult setting. We played at Mankato, um, so they kind of hosted a little mini tournament. Um, so they have, you know, a great field, good facility. And Duluth is a good team. I think Duluth is going to be in the top four in that conference in the Northern Sun, um, you know, I think that we played pretty well. They were missing one of their best players, but thought we came out pretty determined to, to be aggressive uh, defensively um, with our front three. Kale Aston had a lot of opportunities with with regards to, uh, you know, turning balls over, had some opportunities, um, you know, on a few mini breakaways and wasn't able to capitalize other than just the one opportunity. But that was, you know, that was good to see. Uh, Katie Bounds coming in with uh, the freshman scoring not only her first goal but scoring two mm -hmm. uh, is is great to see. She's a hardworking uh, freshman who, you know, I think that was uh, well, well re a well rewarded uh, gift for her with uh, what she's put in the first month here. So, you know, and I think getting out of the weekend with zero goals against, I think, was uh, some of the things that I think were good for us. You know, we didn't think we didn't like giving up the two goals that we gave up uh, last weekend at home. I thought that we sh they were preventable. Right. Um, you know, so getting our back line, our midfielders to be organized, gelling a little bit. We've made some changes. We have some, some people still sitting out um, with injury. And, and seeing Chelsea Prees really control the game at the back. She wasn't as busy on Friday as she was on Sunday, but it was good to get out with a nice regional win and uh, see some people get on the board scoring-wise. Two freshmen and two seniors uh, uh, was a good result for us on Friday. It was kind of the warm-up game, I guess you could say, for your Sunday game with Minnesota State Mankato on their home field. You're number two going into the game. They're number 24, so a top 25 matchup. Ends up in a 0-0 tie, played through double overtime, no goals scored. Uh, and it looks like it was kind of a, a balanced game for both teams. Mankato led in shots 15-10. You led in corners 9-1, to so there's kind of that mix there. What were your thoughts coming out of that game? It wasn't a win, but it wasn't a loss either. Yeah, I think it's it's good result. It's it's a tough place to play against a very good opponent. There's no doubt in my mind, Minnesota Mankato will be uh, will be um, a top 25 team at the end of the year. If not, quite honestly, should be probably a top 10. Um, and we're going to have to face them if we have any aspirations of getting to the Final Four. We have to face them or somebody like Central Missouri uh, to get out um, to get to the Final Four anyway. So it was a good opportunity for us to see each other uh, for the second year in a row. We tied. Um, and, you know, our kids went there for the second year in a row, and we went in blind. We didn't have any scouting report um, and nothing. So we went in blind. We had kind of just went off of last year's scouting report. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think Peter McGahee has done a great job with them. I think they're definitely better than they were last year. Um, we played better there than we did last year. Um, and it was a style, a game of two styles. You know, I thought, you know, they were kind of uh, baiting us to play into, waiting into the, to play into the, you know, they're comfortable defending in their half and giving us a lot of the ball at the back and trying to break them down. I thought we did at times and didn't make them pay, you know, with nine goal, nine corners, like you said. Mm -hmm. We had a couple opportunities. Um, but in fairness, I thought they had the best chance of the game in the first half where uh, they got slipped in behind us and, and we had to clear a ball off the, off the goal line. And then uh, Chelsea Priest had to make a big save in overtime. So uh, it was a game of long momentum swings. I thought we controlled the first 25, 30 minutes. They controlled the next hour, to be honest. And then uh, I thought we did a nice job of uh, recovering uh, the last 15 minutes, the second half, and all of overtime, and the result was 0-0. So neither of us capitalized on, on the mistakes, but I thought we both probably came out of the game feeling good about how we did. Chelsea Paris, as you mentioned, on Friday, not a lot of action, only one save. She had nine saves on Saturday. Uh, with the shutout, she becomes GVSU's career shutout leader, passing Christina Nesterzio. Uh, she was also named the GLAC Player of the Week. Uh, talk about how, how she was this weekend and how she's done at the start of her senior season. Well, congratulations to her. She passed a very good goalkeeper, in Christine Nesterzio, and, and Chelsea deserves that record. And, you know, Chelsea really had a good weekend. She, you know, she led our team very vocal in the back. Her distribution was excellent. She made the saves that she needed to make. 
you know, many of those, you know, 15 shots were from 30, 30, 35 yards out. So she just had to be clean. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Chelsea's grown into, you know, one of our best leaders. Uh, she's definitely somebody who's when engaged and, and vocal, our team, you know, our team uh, responds. Uh, so it's, you know, it's good to see that she, she was able to do that. And I think it's good for our back line. We've made a lot of changes. It's good for her to be the consistent factor. Uh, for us, and we challenged her going into the weekend. We, you know, she until we gel as a back line, she needs to be something that's very solid, and she she responded. You're on the road. You're back home for five matches in a row, five home game stretch. It's it's nice to be in your own bed for a while. Uh, but you have three games in the next five days, starting on Wednesday. Uh, you take on Ferris State, obviously a big rival there. That's a 7 p.m. game uh, here in Allendale. Then you have Ashland on Friday night at 7 p.m. again, and then uh, you close the weekend with Ohio Dominican Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. That's three games in five days. That's a tough stretch for you. Uh, as we've mentioned before, as you and I were talking before, not a lot of practice time in between there. You, you basically just want to stay healthy and stay fit for the week. Talk about the, the next five days you've got coming up. Tough stretch. Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, we play a fair state team that beat, uh, you know, a tied Armstrong Atlantic last weekend, and they're, they're certainly much improved. Uh, much more athletic, playing with a lot of young uh, players in their starting lineup. So that's, you know, the Ferris Grand Valley, you know, game is always going to be high intensity. And, you know, one of the benefits to this long stretch is uh, that we're at home. We get to sleep in our own bed. But the other is, you know, we're trying to keep our, our kids healthy and, um, and get a couple kids back. We're hoping to get Kelsey Fiscus back and Kayla Kimball back in the next week or two. And, um, and so, you know, it's going to be a difficult matchup. Ashland U University made the GLIAC finals last year, mm -hmm. tournament finals, um, and we're a game away from getting in the NCAA tournament. Ohio Dominican, you know, you could make a case that we're, they were they were number seven out of the six, six seed that, to get into the NCAA tournament. So it's going to be a tough matchup. Um, we're excited, though. That's what makes us better and, and gives us an opportunity to challenge ourselves against GLIAC uh, opponents. And our, our, our number one goal is to try to uh, win the GLIAC. And so it starts starts on Wednesday. And you know, um, you know, no excuses. We're just going to have to uh, monitor, you know, monitor our kids' health and uh, compete. And, and the good thing is, we're at home and we get a chance to play in front of our home fans. Grand Valley State soccer team unbeaten through the first two weekends of the year. They have three games in the next five days, and hopefully next week at the same time we'll be able to say the same thing. Stay unbeaten. Best of luck this week. Thanks, David. CJ. Thanks for watching the Dave DeAnne Show here on the Grand Valley Sports Network.